Okay, so hello and welcome. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about how the transition of Wine to the GitLab has happened. So this is a very long origin story that started during WineConf 2019, so that predates uh, the times I've joined uh, people working on Proton and on Wine. Uh, the idea was discussed, the first attempt to write a bridge uh, like was planned. Uh, people started to writing that bridge and it uh, turns out that mapping something as freeform as emails to the constraints of GitLab, which operates on Git concepts, is super hard because people tend to mess up those emails a lot. Like they send uh, patches as attachments, they uh, mess up the headers, they mess up the formatting and just doesn't really work. And whenever you think you've got everything right, people find a way to screw you. And I've worked for uh, like on free desktops patchwork, which is basically the same thing. It's a patch tracker that tries to integrate mailing lists for the use of uh, of uh, CI systems. It was miserable. Like basically, pe every single week there was a person finding a way to to, to break our patch detection and parsing. So. Eventually, people have gave out and gave up, and this whole thing fizzled out, and there was no WineConf uh, 2020 uh, to follow up on. So you know, then uh, we started doing some changes to Proton development process, which is mostly done internally, uh, because uh, there were uh, builds were very tedious. Uh, spinning a VM, it was hard. So we started moving that to containers. Also, building things locally to upload them somewhere to share it with QA for testing, and uploading that to Steam by hand, like using some weird scripts. That was very tedious uh, on the on Andrew, who is a previous maintainer. Uh, and we decided to start using some kind of CI for that, and just embraced uh, GitLab CI and MRs as the, uh, for, uh, for that uh, particular purpose. So the workflow is more or less like that, that most of the developers still can push directly to Proton, but whenever there is something that would require testing ahead of merge, they can create MRs and they just get out uh, automated builds spit out for them. And it's easy to link to QA. Uh, it's uh, also like a nice to have compile checks if it's some trivial backport like cherry pick. So, uh, Everything was automated, uh, and some wine developers that were initially skeptical of the transition started to thinking that, like, yeah, maybe that GitLab thing is not as bad as I have thought. So that started changing some minds already. Then uh, there was uh, Andrew's crackpot, crackpot idea. That's a, a subject of the email I've got. Uh, and it was to make a prototype of GitLab workflow for Wine for Alexander. Uh, since I had some experience with patch parsing and setting up the internal instance and including the uh, unfortunate email bridge. So what we've did is to uh, change the script a little bit. So this time we decided to play on GitLab's rules. That means uh, the only way to contribute would be MRs because parsing patches as emails is super hard and you are not going to get it right ever. Uh, and instead of the bridging changes this way, so we started sending those MRs as patch series to the mailing list. And that worked okay. There were like some work of corners in codings, uh, patch size limits, uh, but over time I think we, we've got that a, a lot better. Then uh, basically you can reply to all those emails on the mailing list and they should get posted as a comment on, uh, on uh, the, uh, the merge request in GitLab, which kind of works because, you know, comments are free form. There are some issues with formatting one way or the other, but definitely it's much less miserable than parsing patches. Uh, and Newman set up instance for us and I started working on the bridge. It was an okay experience. Alexander liked it, uh, I, I think, because like it take, take off. So he made the switch and now poor Jeremy is maintaining the bridge and Jer Jeremy, I'm deeply sorry. Okay. So this is how it all started. And I guess now Alexander will tell, uh, tell you uh, how it's going right now.
this one no okay that's better yes so well, i guess thank you to Avec and newman and jeremy and everybody who helped with the gitlab setup we now have a working gitlab and personally i'm very happy with it it's not perfect i mean gitlab has bugs and annoyance is like like a, any other tool but to me it's, it's really a nice improvement and i guess most people here feel that way not everybody i know some people hate it so and to recap a little the roadmap that we that i proposed for the transition to gitlab and see where we are with that so the first step was to switch to using merge requests instead of email patches we've done that it works most people are happy to submit merge requests people who are not are just no longer submitting anything so <laughs> we don't know about them if dimitri is watching hi uh, we had to import the wine projects so we imported most of them project like uh, our private version of bugzilla like the one issue website uh, vkd3d incredibly how we accepted that we migrate vkd3d to gitlab uh, we still have a couple of projects that we want that we would like to import like wine mono and wine staging <coughs> probably happen at some point we have the mailing list gateway thanks to Eric and jeremy i think it's mostly for zeb at this point but um, it's working it's not as nice as it could be especially mails sent to the mailing list are then uh, reflected into gitlab in a way that's not very nice to read on the gitlab side so maybe we can find a way to to improve that and we have a mechanism to assign reviewers to to the merge request automatically that's very nice uh, again thanks to jeremy for doing that so based on the maintainer's file it will automatically assign the reviewers whereas previously i had to do that by hand which meant that there was a long delay between uh, when a patch was sent and when the reviewer was noticed notified that they were assigned usually it took a day because I, it would only update when i pushed the commits so right now the reviewers are assigned in, within minutes of of the submission so that's very nice improvement and we changed the sign off policy we had a policy that all the patches should have a sign off by we are now using uh, gitlab approvals for that so as a reminder you no longer need to add a sign off by to every patch this is uh, the reviewer will approve them in gitlab and there's a script that will add gitlab git notes to the commits when they are pushed so that we can uh, basically refer to the to the approvals when when viewing the patches what's in progress now is to use the gitlab ci for the builds for the tests for basically everything you can use it for it's very powerful it's one of the main reasons for switching to gitlab in my opinion and we are only just starting to take advantage of that i'm going to go into more details later I'm hoping at some point we can move the wine wiki to GitLab. This would have the advantage that you no longer need to create a separate account on the wiki, getting approved and learning a different syntax. The, the GitLab wiki is all marked down, so it's the same syntax as uh, patches and everything. So I think that would be a good change. And then there's the open question of whether we want to use the GitLab bug tracker instead of Bugzilla. On the plus side, Bugzilla we have is pretty old. It's a pain to maintain. We have a lot of local changes that need to be redone every time we upgrade. So GitLab bug tracker would be much nicer, much better integrated with the rest of the, of the development system. The downside is the GitLab bug tracker doesn't seem all that good, especially not as powerful as Bugzilla. So maybe we need to wait until 
GitLab improves the bug tracker. We'll see. So I'm going to talk a bit more about the GitLab CI and what we are trying to use it for. So the first very important point is to run the tests, which we have never actually done. I mean, we have a test bot, but it has never been able to run the full test suite on every patch. So that's still something I have to do by hand. I very much want to change that. And I want the GitLab CI to become the reference platform for the tests. Right now, the reference platform is my box at home. So I'm the only one who can tell whether a patch actually succeeds because it's only on my box that it succeeds. It has to succeed. So that doesn't scale. So I'm hoping we can have GitLab be the reference so that everybody can, can see the test results and make sure that the test pass on that platform and not on my home box. Uh, we want to do the daily test runs that are currently done um, by the test bot and basically replace the test bot, do if possible everything that the test bot is doing uh, through GitLab. The test bot is, I don't know how many millions of lines of Perl code. So, uh, for instance, the CI script for, for running the test is maybe 50 lines of uh, YAML code in GitLab. So it's a very nice improvement. So where are we with that? At this point, with the GitLab CI, we are building every commit on Linux, making sure that it builds both uh, 32 and 64 bit. We are building every commit on macOS. So make sure that uh, changes don't break the build on macOS. That's very nice because I don't have a macOS box, so I couldn't test that. So now GitLab is doing it for me. And we are, as of last week, running the full test suite on every merge request, which is a major milestone. We've never done that before. There are still some tests that are a bit flaky, so there will be the occasional failure. Uh, we still need to fix these up as we, as we find them, but it's still, it's still very helpful. And this means once it works, it means I no longer have to run the tests on my box. And the very nice thing with that is that it should make it possible for other people to also approve and, and merge the merge request. At this point, I'm the only one who has maintainer access because I need to run all the tests on my box before merging anything. So once GitLab does that, anybody, well, some people could potentially become maintainers. I don't trust all of you, trust some of you. And we are running the daily uh, Linux test. So that's the full test run that's submitted to the uh, test.1issue.org website so that you can see the page with all the red, which will hopefully become green at some point. I'm working on that. So we are doing that on Linux at the moment. And we are creating the GitLab releases from the CI. Well, that's uh, just a detail, but it's an example of something that also a few lines of CI code just to create the releases and update the website and take care of everything. So it's really nice. It's, it's powerful, that GitLab CI stuff. So what else do we want to do with the CI? So we want to run the tests on Windows to make sure that we don't uh, introduce failures on Windows. On Windows, we only need to run the tests that have been changed because, uh, of course, if you change the wine code, it's not going to change the results on Windows. So we need uh, to, do, to add that. We need to run the daily test suite on Windows. So we need a bunch of Windows VMs like we have now on the test bot. We need to add these to GitLab and run the, the test suite on a uh, different version of Windows. And hopefully at some point we can add more platforms for running the tests, like a platform with the real graphics hardware so that we can test the D3D code. 
and maybe at some point on ARM64 platform so we can test the build and the, run the test on ARM. I've never tried the full test suite on ARM. I have no idea how many failures there are, but it would be interesting to try that. I'm hoping to also at some point move the reviewer assignment to the CI so that it's triggered by sending a new merge request instead of having the, the mail gateway watch the list and then assign the reviewers and so on. It would be a cleaner way to do it. And hopefully at some point we can also build the packages uh, for wine releases uh, directly from GitLab instead of using the OpenSUSE build uh, system that we are using now. That will also be a much cleaner way of doing it. Okay, that's all I had. Any questions? Discussions? Hate about GitLab? Is it hard to completely rewrite the CI infrastructure from scratch uh, rather than using anything the test stuff has? And uh, if so, uh, and it seems to be that way, so why why are we not reusing the test plot, any of the test plot code? So the question is, uh, why are we doing a GitLab CI from scratch instead of reusing the test bot code? Well, if you look at the test bot code, that should probably answer your question. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, there's a lot of code in the test bot that GitLab is doing. I mean, there's a lot of duplication, basically. And the uh, test bot code is all Perl, and basically only Francois understands it at this point. So the hope is that by using GitLab for that, then it's code we no longer have to maintain, and we can simply maintain a, a small script, uh, a bunch of scripts, and not the entire infrastructure. There, there are a lot of hard lessons Francois learned about QMU, so I think we'll be that knowledge will be captured and reused? So. Sure, there are, there are a few things like, like all the Windows VMs. I mean, we can reuse the Windows VMs and using QMU to launch the VMs and all, all that stuff can be reused. Except instead of being called from the test bot, it's going to be called from a, a GitLab runner, basically. But yeah, well, on the Windows VM side, it's going to be pretty much the same. Uh, so the question is, do we have a plan for submitting diffs and executables? Not yet. So yeah, that's one of the things uh, we need to find a way of doing that. Diffs can actually be done by pushing a commit. Uh, executables are a bit more tricky. Well, at this point, you have to create a merge request, but it's, it's easy to change the CI script to just run uh, whatever you'd like to run when you push a commit. Yes, you can, you can, I mean, we don't have support for that at the moment in the CI scripts, but it's fairly easy to add. Right now the CI scripts only runs on a merge request, but you can add a different CI script that runs on push and do whatever you want. And you can actually change it for every commit. So as you push your commit, you can also push changes to the CI script to run the tests uh, the way you want them. So the only thing is really the, the executables. And I'm hoping we can find a way of doing that so that, for instance, we no longer have to maintain separate accounts for testbot. Everybody already has a GitLab account, so it should be possible to reuse that, not have to manage multiple accounts for the same reason as the wiki and Bugzilla and so on. Yes? Security. So, I mean, I guess that's not the point, but uh, I mean, right now you cannot just create an account to test it. You have to be approved. And I always figured out, I think, 
So we figured out that it was to, I mean, have at least a vague idea of who is going to submit a bridge report to the test block uh, because, I mean, there might be security concerns. So let's change uh, how does that change now. Yeah, so the question is, um, Right now, we have uh, when we create a test plot account, we have to get approved so that we can uh, control who is submitting code because you can, of course, submit arbitrary code. I, I mean, it's the same with GitLab. We have to create an account, and obviously, we cannot verify that you are not going to abuse your account. Uh, it's all running in VM as in containers, so I think the risk is not that big and. Anyway, we are we are going to to watch it and see what's what's happening. But yeah, the truth is, if you really want to abuse it, there's probably a way, either with GitLab or with the test bot. So far, nobody has tried to abuse it. So, any other questions? Yes. So someone pushed crypto mining. That can happen, yeah. Any points contributors should take note of, make sure they have a good chance of getting their work noticed. There are currently 100 plus merge clusters. So see uh, Hugh's talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, if your merge request is in a queue for a long time, then probably it's too complicated, it's not well explained, it doesn't point to a bug explaining why you're making the change. So yeah, basically the, the usual advice. And one thing you can do also is to, uh, from time to time, make sure your merge request is still relevant, so you have to rebase on top of the latest git which uh, in turn will mark it as updated. So it will increase the chance that someone will look at it. Basically, it gets to the top of the queue. But don't do that every day. But okay. if your merge request has been in a queue for a month, then maybe you have to rebase, make sure it still works, and that will refresh it and make it more likely that someone will look at it. My recent submission, I found the CI system to discover build or test issues with my environments, which are easily fixed, hopefully in a single refresh, but sometimes it takes several attempts. And the MR turns into a big mess of ugly messages. Is this bad or hurting the chances of getting your MR accepted? No, as long as the test... Uh, do you have to repeat, even if it's on the chat? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, the question was uh, if whether the, if the tests are failing and you have to re-push and they still fail and you push again and after about uh, 10 tries they finally succeed. No, I think that's fine, as long as the tests succeed in the end. Basically all I look at is the, the pipeline state and if it's all green then good. Sometimes it would be marked as a failure when it's actually not a failure because some of the tests fail uh, some of the tests are flaky and will fail, so if it's a failure, I would usually look to make sure it's a real failure. But if it's all green, then then it's perfect. Right, right. The failure needs to be something that I know has been failing before, and I, I've been running the test every day on my box, so I have a pretty good idea of what tests are actually likely to fail or happen to fail sometimes. So. More questions? Okay. Go ahead. Um, will we get uh, Mac OS tests? The question is, will we get Mac OS tests? Um, yes, possibly. Um, the only issue is uh, making them pass. Because once they are enabled in GitLab, they really need to succeed. So otherwise, the, the pipeline will always show a failure. So we need to make them pass. And then once they pass, there's no reason we, we couldn't enable them. We have a Mac, uh, a Mac setup just for that. So we can run the test on it. 
Yes. So the question is, we have only one uh, Linux configuration. Do we want to add more uh, Linux configurations, like different locales and things like that? Yes, I think that's the plan. Um, probably not as many as we have on the test bot currently, because we are now running the full test suite. So if we run the full test suite on 10 different locales, it's going to take a day for every merge request. But we can certainly have other VMs and make it possible to run the test on them. Again, what you need to do is when you push your changes, you push a change to the CI script to change the, the GitLab runner that it's using, basically. It's not implemented yet, but it's, it's easy to do. That said, I'm not sure how much value there is in running in 10 different locales. Because if you look at the test bot results, they basically all the same results across locales except for one or two tests. So that may not be worth running the full test suite on all of these all the time, just for one or two failing tests. Uh, so, same question on Windows. Do we plan to have more multiple Windows VMs across all versions? Ultimately, yes. Um, the thing I want to avoid is what we have now with the test bot, where we have, uh, I don't know how many VMs with, I don't know how many failures each, so that everything is red, basically. So what I would like to do is to add VMs one at a time and make sure they succeed. So for instance, if we add a Windows 11 VM, then we add one, and then we work on fixing the test before adding anything else. So it's going, it will take time. I don't expect we will have as many VMs as we have on the test bot right now in the near future, but they should, they should succeed, which they don't at the moment, and there's simply no, no other path to making them succeed. I don't think anybody is going to fix the Windows 7 tests anytime soon. Other questions? Just to establish this, there's been relatively small amounts of disagreement, so this change is permanent. Is that correct? Yes, this is permanent. <laughs> it's not going to go away. I'm giving people the opportunity to raise this issue. Sure. If, if you hate GitLab, then speak up. I mean, I can understand. It's, it's not perfect. There are a number of bugs. There are a number of things that are annoying with GitLab. I do think it's much better than the, the emailing batches uh, mechanism that we had before, which was not perfect either, far from that. Maybe at some point there will be something that's so much better than GitLab that we will switch. But hopefully GitLab will improve and at some point we may be able to improve it ourselves. I mean, it's all open source, so I haven't yet figured out how to build it. But once I do, then we can accept patches to GitLab and maybe upstream the patches or, or use... Uh, we are running our own GitLab so we can patch it if necessary. Anything else? Yes. So I just want to um, congratulate all of you for doing this. It takes, uh, weirdly enough, it takes a lot of courage and an open source community to resist GitHub. Install your own instance of GitLab and not use it. There aren't many startups that have taken this long. A lot of credit of the white community for being willing to take it. 
Thank you. So, yeah, Bradley is uh, thanking us for using GitLab and not GitHub or some other proprietary thing. Of course, GitHub being Microsoft, I mean, it's a fairly obvious choice to not using them. <laughs> I had made the foolish offer. Bradley, would you mind speaking for a moment on the, because the Conservancy was thinking of trying to offer some service along these lines for member projects, and I had offered to participate in that. Yeah, and that, that actually ends on me. Uh, okay. I was trying to talk to myself earlier, there's been other things going on that have had my attention in the last few months. But uh, we are trying at SFC to offer more hosting services, not just SFC projects, but just in general. We're starting that slowly, uh, and I think we want to collaborate to the extent to which it is an idea opportunity for Certainly at SFC, we would like to see more of our projects self-hosting, avoiding proprietary solutions like GitHub. And I think there are some opportunities to collaborate. Some of what I've been hearing in your talk, I think that makes a little bit more difficult because your needs are a little bit more intensive because you've got other platforms you have to test against that most of our projects don't. So we'll, we'll, we'll just have to sort of keep talking about how much that is. But we really appreciate your offer of working with other SFC projects, some of which do want to have GitLab instances of their own. We're trying to take a multifaceted approach because, as you said, there is some negative feedback about GitLab and not every project is going to want self-hosted GitLab. So we're trying to take as many approaches as we can. And we're actually, I just put a grant application in for stuff regarding hosting to a major grant maker. So we're hoping to get funding at SFC to provide non-proprietary hosting for open source. I never thought I'd be in a world where I had to say, like, we have to resist the proprietary software for developing open source software, but that is where we are. And so anyway, I, I congratulate you all for resisting it. So thank you. Thank you. And yeah, if if we can help, I mean, we now have a lot of experience with GitLab. So hopefully this can benefit other projects. Sometimes, the, it's, yeah, sorry. Uh, the question is, uh, testbot is still sending uh, test results. When there are test failures, is it sending comments to the, to the commits? So does this cause the changes to be rejected? Sometimes, but I mean, it's the issue we had before is that the testbot cannot really be trusted. There are so many false positives. Sometimes it's clearly a real problem, and in that case it doesn't get merged. Sometimes it's not clear, it may be a false positive, and it gets ignored. So that, that hasn't really changed. Hopefully it will change with the GitLab CI, and the results can be trusted again. Anything else? Well, thank you.